Hello viewers, in this session we are going to learn history of British drama. Drama is a literary composition which is performed by professional actors before an audience on stage called a theatre. It has a particular theme, action and conflicts. During the performance, the facial expressions, body language and eye-catching makeup of the actors and actresses are prominent features of a live performance. Drama was introduced to England by the Romans and the auditoriums were constructed across the country for this purpose. By the medieval period, a form of early street theatre was associated with the Morris dance which concentrated on the themes such as St. George and the Dragon and Robin Hood. These were folk tales retelling old stories and the actors travelled from town to town performing these plays for their audiences in return for money and hospitality. Although this genre of literature existed in different countries, but English drama deserves special mention because the legendary dramatists like William Shakespeare, Ben Jonson, George Bernard Shaw, T.S. Eliot, etc. have made huge contributions to enrich this form of expression and their association with it gave English drama a perpetual worldwide recognition. The English drama had its origin in the ceremonial worship in the church in a dialogue form. Certain events and stories from the Bible were enacted and presented through dialogue form. That was basically responsible for the advent of new form of religious entertainment called mystery and miracle plays. Actually, a jar of literature had its subtle and complex origin in these plays. Accordingly, English drama can be studied in five different stages. One, mystery and miracle plays. Two, morality plays, three, interludes, four, artistic drama, and five, modern drama. The mystery and miracle plays were early phase of English drama. As mentioned above, there were the religious plays mostly based on the events and stories from the Bible. In particular, the mystery plays were based on the subjects taken from the Bible and the miracle plays primarily dealt with the lives of saints and martyrs. Miracle plays on the subjects of miracles performed by saints were developed late in the 12th century in England and Europe. These plays focused on the life of Virgin Mary and St. Nicholas. Since beginning, mystery and miracle plays were fully controlled by the priests and the church authorities. In the course of time, they were performed by a group of artists and guilds. Initially, the plays were mostly written and enacted by priests, but later other people also started performing various roles during the performances. Since 1250, the plays moved outdoors into the churchyard and into the open fields, town squares or the city streets as geographically further from the church. The clergy had less control over the content. In that period, almost all the priests and playwrights adopted Latin language for writing the plays. Then, the plays were also presented in the local vernacular languages instead in Latin only. This allowed the message of the Bible to be more accessible to the illiterate audience. These new plays in the vernacular based on Bible stories are called the mystery plays. In a short period of time, the mystery and miracle plays became very popular and the frequency of performances also increased. The people 
belonging to different strata of society started showing interest in that jar of literature. In the meantime, Latin was replaced by English and other languages as well. That development played a crucial role and it was relatively instrumental for the advent of English drama. The mystery and miracle plays were the landmarks in the development of English drama. It made a significant contribution in the development of English drama in particular. The performances of those plays were continued till 16th century. The earliest known religious play was Adam, which describes the fall of man. Some other mystery and miracle plays are Noah, Nativity and Shepherd's Plays. The morality play is a latter stage in the development of English drama. Like the mystery and miracle plays, the morality plays were basically didactic in purpose and mostly had personification of abstractions such as mankind, mercy, peace, good and bad angels, etc. In those plays, the devil plays a very important role with the possibilities of tragedies. Vice is shown as the humorous character and the hero is generally personification of human qualities. The morality plays were never part of any cycle but developed independently as moral tales in the late 14th and early 15th century in the Europe and England. They do not illustrate moments in the Bible or do they describe the life of Christ or the saints. Instead, they describe the lives of people facing temptations of the world. The people are careful to present a warning to the unwary that their souls are always in peril, that the devil is on constant watch and that people must behave properly if they are to be saved. Later on, allegories were introduced in the morality plays. Allegory can be found in the play, such as in the castle of Perse Varanser. Mankind is a short morality play, whereas every man is a masterpiece and is the best example of the morality play. Every man is a personified Christian virtues and the vices as they battled with one another for control of a mortal's soul. These plays were explicitly designed to teach a moral and improve the behavior of their audience. All these plays are allegorical and the characters are personified abstractions of human qualities. The morality plays are considered to be very important in the development of English drama because those plays become free from the sole control of religion and the church in particular. The writers were given complete freedom in the choice of the theme and characterization. They did not remain confined to scriptures for their themes and characters. This factor became instrumental in the growth of English drama. Later, the morality plays were called Tudor morality plays, which were in contract with the early morality plays. The Tudor morality plays continued the didactic nature of the original morality plays, but they become more secular in theme, characterization and dramatization. Some of the famous morality plays are Magnificence, The Four Elements, the satire of the three estates, King Jahan, etc. The interludes represent the next important stage in the development of English drama. The term interlude is generally used for the drama 
before the beginning of English tragedy with Govardhan. Actually, interlude refers to a short play. Or, in general, any representation between parts of a larger stage production. It is a piece of music performed between acts of a theatrical production. Or, a short play within a play, within a larger theatrical work. Some interludes are full-length plays. Ralph Royster Doister is one such example, which has a full length as Shakespeare's Macbeth. John Hewitt's The Four Piece is a remarkable interlude. Those days, the themes of the interlude were science, philosophy, farcical situations, and even the stories from the mysteries. In England, Robin Hood plays were popular. And all over Europe, interludes with simple plot lines were performed at various social functions. Secular dramas were usually performed in winter and were often associated with schools, universities and nobility. Who would have the resources, time and space to perform such kind of organized plays. Early in the 16th century, the morality in its turn was largely superseded by another sort of play called the interlude. But just as in the case of mystery and the morality plays, the interlude developed out of the morality. And the two cannot always be distinguished. Some single play being distinctly described by the authors as moral interludes. In the interludes, the realism of the moralities became still more pronounced, so that the typical interlude is nothing more than a coarse farce, with no pretense at religious or ethical meaning. The name interlude denotes literally a play between. But the meaning intended between whom and what is uncertain. The plays were given sometimes in the halls of nobles and gentlemen, either when banquets were in progress or on other festival occasions. Sometimes before select audiences in the town halls or on village greens. The actors were sometimes strolling companies of players who might be minstrels or rustics and were sometimes also retainers of the great nobles allowed to practice their dramatic ability on tours about the country when they were not needed for their master's entertainment. In the interlude moralities and interludes, first appears device, a rogue who sums up in himself all the vices of the older moralities and serves as the buffoon. Sometimes, interlude is considered to be the transition between medieval morality plays and Tudor dramas. Interludes were performed at court or at great houses by professional minstrels or amateurs at intervals between some other entertainment such as a banquet or the proceedings or following a play or between the acts. Although most of the interludes were sketches of a non-religious nature. Some plays were called interludes that are today classed as morality plays. John Hewitt, one of the most famous interlude writers, brought this jar of literature to perfection. His conspicuous contributions are the play of the weather, the play called the 4PP. The 
English drama as a genre of literature and a means of intrinsic and extrinsic expressions came into the full flow in the Elizabethan period and with some inconsistency in the course of the last 400 years. This genre of literature is still liked and appreciated by the people of the 21st century. The following sections provide an account of the phases of development of English drama from the English Renaissance to the 21st century. The English Renaissance was a cultural and artistic moment in England which started in the 16th century and continued till 17th century. It paved the way for the dominance of drama in England. In the regime of Queen Elizabeth I, great poetry and drama were produced. The renowned playwrights like William Shakespeare, Christopher Marlowe, Ben Johnson, John Webster and some others made huge contributions to the field of drama. During Renaissance, most of the playwrights were specialized in only one of the themes. But William Shakespeare was an eminent playwright who emerged as a versatile artist and produced history plays, comedies, tragedies and so on. The other prominent dramatists of the age were Robert Greene, Thomas Nash, Thomas Lodge, George Pill, Thomas Kidd, John Webster, etc. Jacobian period and restoration period. During Jacobian period, the Puritans closed English theatres in 1642 after the Civil War. It was for their own religious purposes and ideological reasons. However, the theatres in London were reopened soon after the restoration of the monarchy in 1660. With the support of Prince Charles II, the theatres continued to flourish in the country. The comedy of manners can be described as the glory of the restoration period. This period reflects the spirit of the age and depicts the manners of the society. Hence, it is labelled as the comedy of manners. During the early 17th century, the native dramatic tradition flourished. The topical writing of the dramatists and the introduction of the professional female actors to drama gained the attention of the audience. Until then, all the female characters were played by the men. In this period, the comedy of manners was fathered by George Etheridge, who wrote, Love in a tub, she would if she could, and so Fopling Flutter. Then, the writers like Congreve, George Farker, Sir John Vanberg, etc., made their contributions to the comedy of manners and kept the spirit alive. The comedy of manners contributed a great deal to the field of drama, particularly comedy. The restoration period gave rise to inclusion of new genres in English drama, such as heroism and restoration comedy. George Ethel's The Man of Mode, which was staged in 1676, William Wycherley's The Country Wife, staged in 1676, Afra Baines, The Rover, staged in 1677. John Brydon's Aurangzeb, staged in 1675. John Brydon's All for Love, staged in 1677. And Thomas Otway's When is Preserved, staged in 1682, were some of the popular plays of the period. 18th century drama. The restoration comedy in England started in the latter half of the 17th century and faded away with the advent of the 18th century. The sentimental comedy originated during the period of bloodshed revolution which took place in 1668. 
since the revolution was against the aristocracy, it brought a radical change in the social importance of middle class people. The middle class people looked at comedy of manners with scorn and disgust. It resulted in the emergence of sentimental comedy. Domestic tragedy and sentimental comedy became the new flavor of the period. Fair Bursky and musical entertainment, which preceded the English music hall, flourished during the period, suppressing the popularity of legitimate English drama. Sympathy and pathos came into comedy. Instead of making the audience laugh, they made tears roll down their eyes. Victorian era, musical burst cues and comic operas competed with the plays written by William Shakespeare during the Victorian era. In 1855, the German Reed entertainments took efforts to give a boost to the musical theater in Britain. In 1890, the first series of Edwardian musical comedies were introduced to the country. Improved transportation facility resulted in the movement of the audience who could now afford to travel to the theater late in the night as well. The number of potential patrons of English theater saw a significant growth. As a result, plays started running for longer duration in the theaters. In the course of time, more number of people started coming to the theaters. This resulted in drama being a profit-making business. The increase in the audience resulted in the improvement in the production of value of drama. The late Victorian era saw the growing fame of W.S. Gilbert and Oscar Wilde, leading poets and dramatists of the period. The plays written by Oscar Wilde have close resemblance to those written by the Edwardian dramatists, such as George Bernard Shaw, Henrik Ibsen and others. The Edwardian musical comedy occupied the London stage until World War I, when they were replaced by the increasing popularity of American musical theatre and comedies. Newell Coward, Ivor Novello and their contemporaries soon replaced the Edwardian musical comedy. Modern and contemporary drama. During the 20th century, especially after First World War, Western drama became more internationally unified and less the product of separate national literary traditions. Expressionist playwrights tried to convey the dehumanizing aspects of the 20th century technological society through such devices as minimal scenery, telegraphic dialogue, talking machines, and characters portrayed as types rather than individuals. Notable playwrights who wrote expressionist dramas include American writers like Elmer Rice and Eugene O'Neill. The 20th century also saw the revival of drama in verse. Although the writers like W.B. Eats W. H. Auden, T. S. Eliot, Christopher Fry, and Maxwell Anderson produced effective results. Verse drama was no longer an important form in English in the modern period. During the first half of the 20th century, English drama was revitalized, mainly through the works of two completely different playwrights, completely different in style, character, and personality. G. B. Shaw, one of the greatest names in the 20th century British theatre, he was an Irishman who dominated the first half of the century with the plays like Man and Superman, The Pygmalion, and has long been recognized as a great playwright. He began his literary career as a critique and became a passionate advocate 
of the realistic plays of the Norwegian writer Henrik Ibsen. Neil Coward was an actor, singer, songwriter, and a playwright whose flippant wit and outrageous behavior made him a successor to Oscar Wilde. His major plays include Hay Fever, Private Lives, Design of Living, Bliss Spirit, This Happy Breed, Nude with Violin, etc. His musicals include Bittersweet and his patriotic pieces include Cavalcade, which encapsulated the spirit of Britain in the 1940s. In much the same way, his early plays had done for the 1930s. The majority of the musical dramas of the 20th century were written by Andrew Lloyd Webber, who dominated the scene during the period. His works gained immense popularity. Consequently, the dramas traveled to Broadway in New York and around the world. Some of them were turned into feature films as well. In the end of the 20th century, postmodernism had a serious effect on the existence of English drama. The impact of postmodernism brought a number of new young playwrights to prominence. Each of them was pushing the boundaries imposed by the official censor. Throughout the 1950s, all manner of attempts to avoid censorship were tried, including turning theatres into private clubs for members only. Gradually, the censorship rules were relaxed. Then, finally in 1968, all theatre censorship was abolished and a new era in playwriting was born. However, the two outstanding figures of British theatre through this time were Samuel Beckett and Harold Printer. Samuel Beckett is undoubtedly one of the most important and influential writers of the 20th century. He is best known as the leading dramatist of the 1950s moment called the Theater of the Absurd. Some of the plays written by Samuel Beckett are Waiting for Godot, End Game, Crafts, Last Tape, Happy Days, etc. Herald is a unique amongst contemporary dramatists. As a playwright, poet, actor, director, and screenwriter, he was the most original, stylish, and enigmatic writer in post-war British theatre. His works had a profound influence on fellow playwrights throughout the Western world, and his highly charged plays are held up as masterpieces of the 20th century. His major works are The Birthday Party, The Caretaker, The Dumb Waiter, The Homecoming, Old Times, No Man's Land, etc. So this is how is the journey of British drama. In this lesson, we started talking about English drama in general. We mainly focused on mystery and miracle plays, morality plays, interludes, artistic drama, and modern drama. At the end of this lesson, we also focused on some of the major contributors in the 20th and 21st century. I hope you enjoyed this class. See you in the next class. Thank you.